In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Very warm welcome back to St Mary's Church this morning, as we gather on the sixth Sunday after Easter. I hope from wherever you're watching this, that you are well and your loved ones also. Behind the camera, I'm imagining a number of you sat in your usual positions. I know you're joining me from different places, but we look forward to that day when we can be together again. For those who know me, know that last night uh, should have been the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, I'm one of those rather strange people who loves the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, as we're all aware, we haven't won it in a very long time. Um, but when we do win, we seem to win with some rather wonderful songs. We last won Katrina and the Waves, Love Shine a Light, back in 1997. Last night showed how powerful that song has been for those who watched what was broadcast. Today, as we gather in worship, we pray that God's love will shine into each of our hearts, today and always. So, as we gather together this morning, we begin with our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those not familiar with our service, Whenever we come to worship, we also take the opportunity to confess those things that we wish we hadn't said or done in this past week. And so before we do so, let's pause for a moment. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join together in our song of praise, the Gloria in Excelsis. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So to collect our special prayer on this sixth Sunday of Easter. God our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our 
first reading this morning is Acts chapter 17, beginning at the 22nd verse. Then Paul stood in front of Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. Whatever therefore your worship is as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it. He who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God, and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. If you love me, you will keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commands and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And so may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me begin this morning by telling you about Maud. That's not her real name. I met Maud back in 2011 when I was finishing theological vicar school training. Maud was in a hospice and I was on placement there for the week, gaining experience. I popped in to see a number of those who were there, but I know Maud several times I tried to speak to her. On one occasion, though, she opened up a little more about her life. The first thing she wanted to tell me was that she was a nobody, that she lived an ordinary life, 
He'd lived in a tower block flat in North London. He felt she'd never achieved anything special and did not really have a story to tell. Her life was boring. Here she was in a hospice in Cambridge with no one to visit her. She'd lost contact with her son. Now she was coming to the end of her life on her own. Eventually, through our continued conversation, she told me a little more. She told me about one of her earliest jobs. She used to be a cleaner. A very ordinary job, nothing special, she said. So I asked, where was she a cleaner? And it turned out it was for a five-star hotel in central London. It then transpired that amongst the many folks she had met and cleaned for, she had also met the rock stars of the 60s, from the Rolling Stones to the Beatles. They knew her by name as they would often have long stays in that hotel. And over the years, they had given her signed memorabilia and posed for photographs with her. A nobody? Ordinary? I don't think so. Maud had many more stories to tell, from her early childhood in the Blitz, to looking after her son and the ramifications of their falling out. What seemed ordinary to Maud was certainly not to me, and I'm sure others too. As a result of my conversations with her though, I remember being struck about how we see ourselves and value ourselves well as value our own stories, much of which go untold. I know I could share personal stories of being a cleaner, cleaner in a care home, stories of being a part-time gardener, supermarket worker, all before being a meteorologist and later priest. The truth is, we don't often share our stories. We often don't recognise our value. And we often don't recognise the depth of experiences we have had that certainly aren't ordinary. Maud went on to ask me about faith. She told me she had always believed, but not really gone to church. She was so worried that, as in her eyes, she had achieved little, that there would be no place for her in heaven. Now, I would be anxious to answer today that sort of question, so imagine doing so ten years ago. The first thought, and I'm grateful a God-given thought that came to me, was to talk about the icon that hung in the chapel, and continues to, at Westcott House where I trained. The icon is of Christ with an open book, and the words scribed are, You did not choose me, but I chose you. Those words coming from a later chapter in John, and as a number of you will know, had and have had since brought me comfort and hope. God had already chosen more. He knew her story, her life, and her value, even if she didn't. He knows our stories, our lives, and our values. 
even if we don't. Because before we could choose him, he has already chosen each of us. I took a postcard of the icon for Maud the next day and shared it with her and left it by her bedside. By the end of that week, my time in the hospice was over and I don't know what happened to the rest of Maud's story. But I hope those conversations and the image I shared were helpful. For many of you, I know a little of your stories, but I hope we can find a way to share them further. I hope also, hope and pray, that we can learn to accept God's love for us, to know we are valued. We may feel our stories are similarly ordinary, but they aren't. All are equal before God. We are not nobodies, but somebodies. Our reading from John, the Gospel passage we've just shared, tells us what we can do in response. And it is on the surface simple. That in the knowledge that he has chosen us, he says, love me and keep my commandments. Then you will know me with you. That is, I'm sure we'd agree, a harder challenge than it may seem. But it is one we can all rise to. What comes next in our stories, only God knows. Our call now, though, is to live those lives, loving God and loving each other, knowing our value and our worth, as well as fighting for the value of others too, who don't have a voice. We do so, in the knowledge that you did not choose me, but I chose you. Amen. So let's hold a moment of silence before we bring together all that we've shared, all that we've been through our prayers before God. And so let us pray for the church, for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness towards each of us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. As we faithfully come before you today, from our own homes, we ask that you hear our prayers, all that rests on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Loving Father, we give thanks that you have already chosen us. Help us to recognise our value and our worth. To see your creation, your family and your church as you see it. Give us the courage today and always to in response love you and keep your commandments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church as it continues to seek to serve Jesus, not least in these times of lockdown. We pray for church leaders, 
for church communities and for church families. We pray for the church family at Canton. We pray for the wider community in the village there. We pray for our church family through this building, St Mary's. And we give thanks for the safe arrival and blessing of Thomas David Cogan Osman this week. We pray for the wider community around us here in Bottom. May the bonds of love and the bonds of the Holy Spirit continue to keep us as one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we ask for blessing and guidance for Elizabeth Aquin, praying for all members of the royal family. We pray for our government, Prime Minister, and all who are working hard to help us find the right way through easing restrictions. Pray that they will do so with the best interests of all people at heart. Loving Father, give wisdom to all in authority, directing this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we hold before you this morning ourselves, our families, friends, and those around us. We ask your blessing upon them and that you will keep watch over them. For those situations where we don't know what to say or do as we support loved ones, we pray your guidance. Loving Father, may your grace be always upon us. May we serve and love you by serving and loving one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who are suffering today in body, mind or spirit. We think of those we know and call them to mind. We pray too for those we've been asking from the benefits and from both parishes. Praying for Bernard and Joe Meeks. Praying for Jo as she's moved to a care home in Hollis St Major. We pray for Wendy and for Francis, remembering their families and loved ones at this time. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the work of the staff in the care homes around us. We give thanks for the residents, their families, separated from them at this time. We particularly remember the care homes within this benefit. Pray for Millard House, Mark Ford, the New Deanery and St Mary's School. Loving Father, we also remember those who have now gone from our arms. Thinking of our own dear departed loved ones. And remembering from our years mind this week. Gwendolyn May, Alice Geddes, Harold Joyce, John Cox, Jill Arthur, Mary Boswell, John Brown, Michael Wallace, and Keith Wright. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
चलो और तीन लेट आउट योर हार्ट लेट अस गिव थैंक्स टू द लॉर्ड आवर गॉड इट इज राइट टू गिव थैंक्स एंड प्रे इट इज इंडीड राइट आवर ड्यूटी एंड आवर जॉय ऑलवेज एंड एवरीवेयर टू गिव यू थैंक्स ऑलमाइटी एंड इटर्नल फादर in these days of easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works for by the mystery of his passion jesus christ your risen son has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory he has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all hope. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy word, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks He gave it to them, saying, "Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me." Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind His death on the cross, His perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in His mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for His coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit upon your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, May praise and glorify you for ever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. 
Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one breath. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. So let us pray. God our Father, whose Son Jesus Christ gives the water of eternal life, may we thirst for you, the spring of life and source of goodness, through him who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We haven't as yet sung a hymn this morning, so I've chosen one I hope you will enjoy, familiar to many of you, and I hope you'll be singing from home. Love divine or loves excellent. Love divine or loves excellent. Joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling. Oh. 
building, echoing, because none of you are here with me. But I'm not on my own this week. Two small people have been in the background the whole time. And so Eleanor wants to come up, stand next to me. Do you want to say anything, talk to the people? Hello, how are you? Bye. <laughs> as much as you're going to get. Uh, I think after junior tech, we'd be grateful if it was that quick, but uh, the children are here. Jacob's very shy and he's just going to hide. Uh, but they send their love, as does Miriam, to each of you as well. A closing blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.